morning, everyone. Thank you for joining on today's call. Unfortunately, we are not able to have a video recorded uh, because of a couple of internet issues. But we will still go ahead with the class. So there will be an audio recording. And uh, please do follow along with the notes that have been provided. I'll just begin with a word of prayer. Abba Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this day. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to go deeper in your word. Lord, we pray that you will equip us, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, uh, uh, help us, Lord Jesus, to understand everything that uh, we are going to discuss today. Lord, we pray, God, for every technical hindrance to be removed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we uh, request, we ask for your blessings, O oh God, upon each one of us, uh, the faculty, and Lord, the, the families of everyone. We commit everything into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been talking about the apostolic and how God uh, still continues to appoint people in the office of an apostle. As we have seen, there is an incredible... Uh, amount of responsibility which is upon the office of a pro uh, of an apostle on all the offices there is but as we have understood there are so many um, very critical things that are expected of the apostolic and so when it comes to anyone who has been called into that office of an apostle god puts them through or God takes them through a season of preparation. So that's what we are going to look at today. Uh, we will study from the life of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul's life has been discussed in many different courses. And uh, this may not be so new for us, but still we can look at it in a little bit of a detail. So... Let's uh, go ahead to chapter 3 here, which talks about the shaping of an apostle. So as we've been saying, when it comes to anything that God calls us to do, there is a preparation. So God is not in a hurry. He, uh, he wants us to be thoroughly equipped for the work of the ministry. And we often say that the greater the call, the greater the preparation. Why? Why is it so? The greater the call, the greater the preparation. What do we have to prepare? Spiritual preparation, character preparation, leadership. Yeah, equipping ourselves with the leadership skills. Yeah, maturity, obedience. Great. So these are all the aspects. Now one can have a call uh, to be an apostle or a prophet or anything, but it takes time to be thoroughly shaped in all the aspects that we all said. You know, we said maturity, character, skills, uh, all these aspects one would need to grow. And so God takes us through a journey. Here we have seen the progression for a person who is being groomed into an apostle. There's what is called as commissioning. Commissioning simply means God confirming that there is a call and sending us out. That is the meaning of commissioning. So very specifically apostolic commissioning. Apostolic commissioning is to be sent out as an apostle. Right? then they need to equip themselves in the apostolic grace. So there is the ability. Grace is nothing but the ability to do that work, that apostolic work. So apostolic grace. Then, of course, the person functions or does the work of the ministry. That is apostolic ministry. And it is usually when the work is done that we can actually call them an apostle. So uh, I know we had questions about, you know, can we call so-and-so an apostle? Is this person an apostle? 
it all depends on the ministry which is demonstrated through their lives that it becomes easier for one to identify whether somebody is an apostle or not so it begins with apostolic commissioning commissioning can happen when um, you know like the call of god is it possible for someone to know that they are an apostle before they journey with god like as a believer paul in fact when he got saved those initial chapters like acts chapter 9 acts chapter 10 over there itself god is revealing to ananias god is telling him look this man he is going to stand before kings i'm calling him as an apostle to the gentiles so god made it very clear in the beginning so is it possible for any of us to know our call even if we are part of the fivefold ministry offices yes we can yes in certain situations people don't know their call and then slowly they find out both are possible in the case of paul he knew this is what he was meant to do so what age do you think he got saved what was his age above 30 33 yeah in the notes it is there 33 uh, but it's encouraging to know that somebody who is you know at that age can start their journey with the lord otherwise we always feel that one has to be very young only then god can help them prepare them for the work of the ministry but not true what about moses 40 you <laughs> so much of hope for all of us but don't wait okay just because 30 40 don't think okay i still have time that's not the point but even if we are you know 30 40 whatever else i heard of people who got born again quite late in life but they were serving god even then at that age so any age god calls us we can serve him so paul was 33 years when he had an encounter with the lord jesus on the road to damascus now it was not like uh, once he was called he didn't serve god see the way we as people th- would feel is now that paul got saved and he has to do all the work of the ministry why delay let him just start serving and paul tried doing that in fact the bible says for 3 years in the area surrounding damascus arabia he went and he started doing the ministry he went to the synagogues to preach the lord jesus and uh, you know he was doing the work but what was the problem people were not ready to accept reason is that um they he he was a persecutor everybody knew that so people wondered whether he is putting up an act uh, to deceive and then probably you know he will persecute so there was no trust factor as far as paul was concerned and so those three years were very difficult and when um uh, the opposers found out they in fact wanted to kill him so what happened is paul leaves the region he goes to jerusalem only for 15 days okay now people may argue and say who mentored paul you know who uh, spent time with him and equipped him and all but in the case of paul we don't see at least in terms of time we don't see him you know sitting with the apostles and getting mentored so to speak i'm sure they would have mentored him they would have guided him but not by keeping him with them only 15 days he was in jerusalem and then he goes to the regions of tarsus uh, cilicia syria so he's from that place paul of tarsus so he just went back to his region and over there he spent 13 years okay 
13 years. For anyone like us, we might wonder that it's, we might think that it's a waste of time. See, three years he tried in Arabia, Damascus, waste, according to us. 13 years. He could have been launched into ministry by then. Unfortunately, he was not ready. And so, God let him be. And, uh, you know, as we calculate all, all these years, after Paul being born again, uh, it is said that at least 17 years, he was not a noted minister of God. Did Paul do the work of the ministry for 17 years? What do you think? He did it. He did it. Wherever he was, the Bible says that he was preaching, proclaiming, you know, clarifying people's doubts. So he was functioning in the capacities of a teacher and a minister of God, but he was not recognized for 17 years. And after 17 years is when we come to Acts chapter 11, where who brought Paul to do the ministry? You know, correct, Barnabas. So we said in the beginning when Paul got saved and he went to Jerusalem, even the apostles were not ready to accept him. But thank God for people like Barnabas. Barnabas is known as a son of encouragement. So uh, according to his personality and his calling, it was nice that Barnabas was a man who said, hey, let's give him a chance. You know, let's give him an opportunity. And so in Acts chapter 11, Barnabas was the one who went, who brought Paul and said, Paul, you now work with me. Let's work together. And so the ministry of Paul in a notable way starts in the church of Antioch. Over there, he functions as a teacher. So for these 17 years, 17 years from where to where? Acts chapter 9 to Acts chapter 11. It's only two chapters, but it is 17 years, right? In between. Paul is still doing the work of the ministry. And uh, what we can assume is there would have been all this development in terms of knowledge ab about God, in terms of developing a life as a disciple, in terms of his prayer life being equipped. You know, Paul is the one who writes about uh, tongues, right, to the Corinthians. Now, he would have learned all this. Paul is the one who writes about uh, the communion. And in fact, when he writes about the communion, he says, I received this by revelation. So just think about it. His journey was not like the disciples. Because many, a lot of what the disciples received, they received it. Uh, from that being passed on. But Paul, there's a little uniqueness to his development. God even gave him revelation of matters. In fact, Peter, in one portion, he says, I'm not like Paul. Paul is very, uh, you know, like uh, learned. And, uh, you know, he, he is... Uh, very well-versed man when, when it comes to these things. But Peter says, I'm so simple, like in writing and all, because he was just a fisherman. So the manner in which Paul got developed is quite different. And the reason is God put him through that school, if you may want to call it school or training or preparation. So 17 years for Apostle Paul. God had a great call for him. After the 17 years, so how old must have he, uh, he have been by then? I think 50, around 50. Okay, so 17 years, God saved at 33. He's already 50 now. What ministry can he do? That's how we might think. But the actual very strong work from Acts 13 
in Acts 13, we see that as the leaders of the Antioch church were praying, the Holy Spirit speaks to them and says, set aside for me Paul and Barnabas for the ministry that I have assigned for them. And then they start traveling and they start moving into the region of uh, you know, uh, Galatia, and from there they move on, uh, you know, Macedonia, so many different places, and they do the work of the ministry. So it's actually starting uh, somewhere around the age when Paul is about 50. And then we see the rest of his life. He is ministering for, again, people say he died somewhere around the age of 66, 67, around there. So another 16 years. But those 16 years of ministry were so powerful, isn't it? He went to so many cities, raised up so many churches. Uh, he uh, raised up so many leaders, even people like Timothy. So when Paul was gone, Timothy was appointed but well-trained by Paul. And it is said that Timothy took care of the church for a couple of decades. You know, So he prepared leaders like that. Paul. Now, all this would not have been possible unless Paul was prepared to step into that calling that God had for him. And God took him through that preparation. So the point is, see, even when it comes to our life calling, there is a season of preparation. Uh, and uh, if you're call in, called into something like the office of an apostle, let's be sure that God is going to do a thorough preparation. And is preparation easy? <laughs> Why? What are the struggles to be in the season of preparation? So much of pruning. OK, pruning, true. What is like the tough part of the season of preparation? Waiting, yeah, I think waiting is the hardest for all of us. We want God to move like that. But waiting is where we uh, get exhausted. But yeah, God is not in a hurry, for sure. So we should also not be in a hurry. And we find that especially when God has a powerful call on someone's life, we say the preparation happens in obscurity, meaning when no one is watching, right? Nobody even knows that person exists. Nobody even knows that person has all these capabilities. And then think about Paul. I don't know if he wondered or he was a very strong man in faith. I have no clue. But if at all, he wondered. He may have thought, God, why did you call me? Nobody is listening to my teaching. Here I am, you know, uh, I'm struggling. And uh, you said I'm going to be an apostle. When? When am I going to be an apostle to the Gentiles? So we may have all these questions, right? But that is obscurity, meaning nobody knows. And we don't have a platform. We don't have, uh, we say, notoriety or in front of people. But it is in that time that a lot of building up happens. And we must allow God to do that. But what is the tendency? Our tendency is we want to launch out. You know, we're ready to jump. That's, that's how we are all uh, wired. Uh, but we must avoid that. In God's time, God will, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, open the door or God will um, orchestrate the situations in the right way. And then we'll have those opportunities where we can step in and we can see how God has prepared us for this time and we are able to serve him. Okay. So that's about the preparation of an apostle. And in the case of an apostle, surely it's a tough, tough journey because uh, there's so much to do. And so one has to be geared to doing it. And uh, there'll be a lot in terms of, you know, 
learning the word working with people having the right heart attitude that god really has to take us through that journey right sure so if that's clear we can move on to the next chapter here which is uh, the function and characteristic of the present day apostolic um, but if there are any points of discussion we can always discuss about preparation yeah i think that's quite clear so let's move on so the function and characteristic of present day apostolic so present day apostolic or any day apostolic we know that uh the main features remain the same of course with time and uh, the availability of resources the things we do can be slightly different like how they traveled in the earlier times it's different from how we do it today right how we communicate today how we reach out to the world today we can be sitting in one place and reaching out to the world that's a possibility today uh i wonder if paul lived today you know how his ministry would have looked because in whatever they had back then they were so dynamic isn't it so the key or the core elements are the same but depending on the resources available in uh, any generation uh, we can see that the expansion looks different of the apostolic so let's go ahead and see some of these uh, uh, features firstly we are saying that apostles or the apostolic when i when we say apostles it's referring to a person who is in the office but when we say the apostolic it's like that umbrella term we said the prophetic which all believers can come under so the apostolic is all believers can be apostolic to a certain degree so apostles pioneer for the extension of the kingdom they are extending the kingdom in different zones either they are physical geographical zones or they are spiritual uh, you know like uh, other uh, uh, spheres in life in society in culture so let's first look at a passage from 1st corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28 this is a very key passage so uh, i would request one of us to read it also 1st corinthians 12 and verse 28 1st corinthians 12 verse 28 and god has appointed these in the church first apostles second prophets and third teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps administrations varieties of tongues okay great so it says god has appointed in the church this is similar to another passage what is that passage we discuss so many times ephesians 4 verses 11 to 13 there it talks about fivefold ministry offices here there's a mixture of uh, the fivefold as well as grace gift of ministry so it talks about healing then it talks about administration right okay so it's not necessarily talking only about fivefold ministry offices but let's look at the language uh, nikhil could you please read it again slowly and god has appointed these in the church yes first apostles second prophets third teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps administration varieties of tongues okay thank you so it says god has appointed first apostles 
so how do we understand this any thoughts first apostles then what is what does that mean okay pioneer okay so does it mean that there is an hierarchy meaning one is above the other like apostles are above the prophets and prophets are above the teachers is that how we okay yes for our understanding right uh, so when we function something may work first like let's say the stimulus of the brain or the nerves but it doesn't mean that you know brain is the first and every other organ is the heart is the second nothing like that so similar very similar even though the language says first apostles we must take it as <coughs> it means first in terms of time uh, you know sri radha said pioneer what do pioneers do they are the first ones to start something new so it's like that first meaning not in in uh, hierarchy but first in time first in order excuse me first in order or rank again this has to do more like pioneering that the apostle will go make way and as they build up things slowly the work of the teacher the the pastor the prophet and all will come in so that's how we understand so when we understand it rightly the application will be right we will trust or we will hope for the apostle to invade new territory and then the others will come and do their work but if we don't understand this correctly then what happens is in terms of giving uh, you know like it happens right in in christian circles like respect they say no you should uh respect the apostle the most and uh, all the others come below because the scripture says first apostle but that is wrong application first simply means first in time first in order or uh, importance okay and that word first is the greek word called as proton 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 uh, it's also like in science we we see that term uh, but then to talk about the apostolic a lot of people use that term like proton proton uh, believers simply means apostolic they try to use that term proton to kind of relate with the apostolic proton simply means first in time like a pioneer okay so we've understood the apostolic will be first in time so what exactly in terms of first what can we expect from the apostle or the apostolic uh yeah foundations foundations of the truth of god's word yes but we also said that doctrines are already laid so there's no question of uh, setting the foundation anymore then what foundation or what um uh, pioneering ah huh. yeah so we would say like new revelation okay uh, but that doesn't mean the truth is changing it just means the depth of the truth is increasing understood so we cannot bring anything new adding to the doctrine adding to what has been revealed however there can be a deeper revelation when we say revelation it's like deeper something uh, you know deeper something that we've not seen so far 
for example, let's take uh, the teaching on tongues. So if we go back to some of the old times and we listen to the sermons, there will be some revelation right, about how to practice uh, speaking in tongues, what, how does it help the believer. But if you look at some of the books that are written today, they have taken a lot of uh, content from earlier, but there's also additional or you know uh, deeper truth which people have come to understand over years, decades. Same thing for healing. If we go back to the writings of some of the early ministers of God who were moving in healing and deliverance, they have some understanding. But if you study it all, and look at some of the books that are there today, right? You find there's deeper revelation. There may even be some, uh, we call it new, but it's not like new as in it, it's not there in scripture. That's not the meaning. We can say new truth or new revelation, uh, but it's like looking at something in a way that you've never seen before, but it already exists. So that is the work of the apostolic, something new. Okay, and uh, we we say movements, some of the movements around the world, like church planting movement. There was a time when you know you wouldn't see that very often, but now we live in a time where you have churches that are planting many churches. It's a movement. It's common. In a lot of uh, church settings, it's common. People understand that, okay, it's not just about my church, but the kingdom of God, planting churches. It's a movement. Or movement like uh, the supernatural, functioning in the supernatural, uh, uh, releasing a prophetic word. Right? There are many churches globally, if you see, they're like that. It's nothing new anymore. People have learned those things, people have grown in those things, people are established in that truth. And, you know, but somebody started it. When it started, it wasn't easy. Like if you go back to things like uh, the prophetic uh, or the gifts of the, the Holy Spirit, how to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, some of the old, old time teachings, like even like vineyard, if you go back to uh, 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 churches and groups like that, at that point, they were teaching basics, like, okay, God can put an impression in our hearts. So, uh, but when you listen there, no, a lot may sound like, oh, basics. They're talking about the basics. But today we have so much more because we've built on it. But those days, those people had to actually push through, pioneer. It was not easy when you were teaching such things. You know, they would have had to face a lot of opposition. So it's like that. So you find that the apostolic will come with that truth, new revelation, and uh, there'll be a breaking of ground, meaning somebody has to start it. Somebody has to start talking about it. Somebody has to start practicing it. Right? That is what the apostolic is all about. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's one of the functions. And we already discussed entering new territory. So then we uh, see that in the apostolic, we would try to see, uh, try to look for places where the gospel has not gone before, and then go there. Okay. Uh, and when it comes to uh, the apostolic, with its pioneering ability. The, the, uh, the apostle is also meant to lead from the front. Okay, lead from the front means uh, being in the forefront of a movement. Okay, being in the forefront. Or uh, it's not like, you know, generally in the apostolic, they don't do things uh, like, okay, yeah, it's happening and we are a part of it. It's, it's not so subtle. You'll find that the apostles are driving it. They're literally in front, making it happen and, you know, taking it forward. So these are some of the features. So three things, new revelation, 
new truth second new territory third is leading from the front so these are the features of the apostolic so when we see uh, someone in uh, that function or uh, a church right uh, functioning like that we would say oh it's apostolic okay it's apostolic or such and such a person is an apostle so that's uh, the basic feature but we will build more on other aspects yeah sure okay then let's just close with a word of prayer uh, and i will request one of us to pray please Pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we thank you for this time, oh Lord Father. We thank you for this uh, time of learning that you have given us, oh Lord Father. Thank you for uh, teaching us new things and for all the good insights and all the new things that we have learned, Lord. Uh, we give you thanks. Uh, Lord, whatever we have learned, oh Lord Father, help us uh, to bring it into a practical knowledge more than a head knowledge, oh Lord Father. Uh, you uh, equip us uh, with your word and uh, Help us to recognize our callings, the giftings that you have given us, O oh Lord Father, and help us to build on it to establish your kingdom. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We'll uh, meet again in the next class.